GPS stations across California's coast recorded impossible readings overnight. Six-foot vertical jumps from San Francisco to Los Angeles with no earthquake, no warning, no explanation. Marine life stranded, ports crippled, experts scrambling for answers. What should take thousands of years happened in hours. The land just rose quietly, everywhere at once. Geologists are stunned, arguing over whether this is catastrophic land movement or a data mirage. But one terrifying fact remains. Experts cannot explain the cause. And the land is still rising. The geological processes driving rapid coastal uplift reveal secrets about Earth's hidden mechanics that could rewrite everything we know about living on unstable ground. California's coastline sits on the meeting point of two restless tectonic plates, the Pacific and the North American. Over millions of years, the, this boundary has produced a landscape in constant measured motion. Most of the time, that movement is almost invisible. The land creeps at a pace of two to four millimeters per year, a rate so slow it would take a lifetime to notice even a few inches of change. This is the natural order along the coast, confirmed by decades of records from ground-based GPS, satellite radar, and tide gauges. Scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory track these shifts with extraordinary precision. Their instruments can detect the ground rising or falling by less than the thickness of a fingernail. In the Santa Barbara Basin, carefully calibrated sensors have measured uplift of just two or three millimeters a year barely enough to register on a ruler. In other places like Long Beach, human activities such as oil extraction or groundwater pumping sometimes nudge the land up or down by a few centimeters, but always at a gradual pace. The majority of California's coast actually sinks rather than rises as groundwater is drained or sediment compacts beneath sprawling cities. Even when the land does lift, the process is slow and steady. Every change is logged, compared, and checked across multiple networks, satellite interferometry, ground stations, and tide markers. Each layer of data reinforces the same story. Vertical land motion here is measured in millimeters per year, not feet per day. Marin Gavorchin, a remote sensing scientist at JPL, puts it plainly. In many parts of the world, like the reclaimed ground beneath San Francisco, the land is moving down faster than the sea itself is going up. For geologists, these tiny numbers are the baseline, the expected rhythm of a living, shifting coast. Anything faster, any sudden leap, would be more than unusual. It would be unthinkable. When GPS stations up and down the coast started reporting vertical jumps of six feet in a single night, alarm bells didn't just ring, they shattered. These instruments are built to catch the subtlest shifts, logging every movement with precision down to the millimeter. Their data is checked against satellite radar, tide gauges, and old-fashioned leveling surveys, all cross-validated by teams of analysts at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the United States Geological Survey. The odds of every system failing at once are astronomical. If these numbers are real, we're not just rewriting textbooks. We're questioning the ground we stand on. The accepted science says that only a massive earthquake or volcanic eruption could move the Earth this much, this fast. But the seismic networks were silent. No tremors, no rumbles, not even a blip. The land just rose quietly everywhere, all at once. This left experts with a chilling choice. Either the world's most advanced monitoring network had failed on a scale never seen before, or something was happening to the planet that no one could explain. To understand how California's coast could rise without warning, we need to look beneath the surface at the hidden forces that shape our shoreline. The truth is, land can move vertically through several mechanisms, each operating on different timescales and with different signatures. The most familiar driver is tectonic activity along the San Andreas Fault System. When stress builds up between the Pacific and North American plates, it doesn't always release through horizontal earthquakes. 
Sometimes that energy manifests as vertical thrust, pushing blocks of crust upward. The 1994 Northridge earthquake, for example, lifted parts of the Santa Susana Mountains by nearly a foot in seconds. But these events come with unmistakable seismic signatures, the very tremors that were absent during the recent coastal rise. Subduction zone dynamics offer another pathway. Along Northern California, the Juan de Fuca plate dives beneath the North American plate, creating enormous compressive forces. When these forces suddenly release, they can cause rapid coastal uplift. The 1964 Alaska earthquake lifted some coastlines by 30 feet, but again, this came with a magnitude 9.2 earthquake that shook the ground for nearly five minutes. What this means is that silent uplift requires different mechanics entirely. Groundwater dynamics present one possibility. Deep beneath California's coastal plains lie layers of clay and sediment that respond dramatically to changes in water pressure. When aquifers recharge rapidly, particularly after heavy rainfall, the increased pore pressure can literally lift the ground above. The Santa Clara Valley has experienced measurable uplift when groundwater levels recover after drought periods. But this process typically unfolds over months or years, not hours. The counterintuitive part is that fluid injection can work in reverse. When water or other fluids are pumped into deep rock formations, they can reduce friction along fault planes and trigger sudden movement. Enhanced geothermal projects and wastewater injection have been linked to induced seismicity, but the scale required to lift hundreds of miles of coastline would demand injection volumes beyond anything currently practiced. Landslide mechanics offer perhaps the most intriguing explanation. The Portuguese Bend landslide south of Los Angeles demonstrates how massive blocks of earth can create vertical displacement through compression. When a landslide's leading edge or toe encounters resistance, the accumulated mass has nowhere to go but up. This toe uplift can happen rapidly, especially when triggered by groundwater saturation. Here's what most people miss. Landslides don't always look like dramatic cliff collapses. Some move as coherent blocks, shifting slowly until conditions trigger sudden acceleration. The recent atmospheric river events that drenched California could have reactivated dormant slide planes along the entire coast, creating synchronized uplift as multiple landslide toes compressed against resistant bedrock. Deep crustal processes add another layer of complexity. Magma intrusion, even at depths of several kilometers, can dome the surface above. The Long Valley Caldera has shown measurable uplift during periods of increased magmatic activity, though again, this typically occurs over geological timescales. The most unsettling possibility involves hydrothermal pressure buildup. California's coast sits above a complex network of fault systems that channel groundwater and geothermal fluids. If these systems experienced a sudden pressure surge, perhaps triggered by deep seismic activity too small to register on surface instruments, the resulting hydraulic lift could theoretically raise large areas simultaneously. What makes the current situation unprecedented is the combination of scale, speed, and silence. Each known mechanism for rapid uplift comes with characteristic signatures, seismic activity, localized effects, or gradual onset. The recent coastal rise defies these patterns suggesting either an unknown process or an extraordinary coincidence of multiple mechanisms acting in concert. Real-time monitoring reveals the movement continues, with some areas showing additional centimeters of rise each day. This ongoing deformation is perhaps the most crucial clue, indicating that whatever force initiated the uplift remains active beneath California's coast. Port officials at Los Angeles and Long Beach woke to a crisis that no emergency plan had ever imagined. Container ships worth hundreds of millions lay stranded on exposed mud flats, their massive hulls resting awkwardly where deep water channels once allowed passage. 
Cranes and dock workers stared helplessly at cargo that couldn't move. In a single night, the nation's busiest ports had been cut off from the Pacific. More than $1.4 billion in daily trade ground to a halt. The economic ripple effects spread instantly across supply chains that depend on West Coast ports for everything from electronics to fresh produce. By noon, insurance companies were scrambling to calculate losses that defied their actuarial models. Supply chain managers realized that critical shipments would spoil or sit idle with no way to reach American shelves. Harbor masters logged the chaos in real time. Radios crackled with reports of fishing boats perched above the waterline throughout Monterey Bay, their hulls resting on sand that had been submerged for decades. In Port Huenemi in Oakland, the story was identical. Docks left high and dry. Shipping schedules shredded. Panic set in as news spread that every major port along the coast had been crippled simultaneously. The infrastructure failures cascaded beyond maritime operations. Coastal highways buckled, where the sudden elevation change created stress fractures in asphalt and concrete. State Route 1, California's iconic Pacific Coast Highway, developed dangerous gaps and rises that forced emergency closures from Big Sur to Mendocino. Engineers discovered that storm drain systems, designed for specific elevations, now discharged into empty air above receded tide lines. Water treatment plants faced immediate crises as intake pipes designed to draw from the ocean found themselves suspended above the new shoreline. Desalination facilities in Carlsbad and Huntington Beach shut down operations, threatening water supplies for millions of residents. Power plants that relied on seawater cooling systems scrambled to extend their intake infrastructure or face emergency shutdowns. On the beaches, the environmental toll became visible within hours. Tide pools that had sheltered starfish, anemones, and crabs for generations now baked in the sun unreachable by the receding ocean. Marine biologists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium rushed to organize rescue teams, calling in volunteers with buckets, wet towels, and makeshift pools. Hundreds of seabirds and seals floundered where the surf used to break. Emergency crews worked through the night, but the scale overwhelmed them. For every animal saved, dozens more perished in the newly exposed zones. Kelp forests, suddenly elevated above their life-sustaining waters, began dying en masse, creating an ecological disaster visible from satellite imagery. The human toll extended to coastal communities unprepared for such rapid change. Residents of beachfront properties found their homes suddenly perched on cliffs where gentle slopes once led to the water. Septic systems designed for specific drainage patterns failed as groundwater tables shifted with the land movement. Emergency response coordination between state and federal agencies revealed gaps in disaster planning that no one had anticipated. FEMA's coastal flooding protocols proved useless for the opposite scenario. The National Guard deployed to assist with marine rescues and infrastructure assessment, but their equipment and training focused on traditional disasters, not geological upheaval that defied explanation. The psychological impact proved as significant as the physical damage. Coastal residents who had lived with earthquake preparedness suddenly faced a threat that moved silently, without warning, and continued changing their landscape hour by hour. The certainty that the ground beneath their feet was stable had vanished, replaced by the unsettling reality that the coast itself could transform overnight. The crisis exposed a fundamental gap in California's disaster preparedness infrastructure. Current early warning systems are designed around seismic events, tsunamis, and gradual sea level rise. None account for the possibility of rapid, non-seismic land movement that can transform coastlines in hours rather than decades. The state's earthquake early warning system, operated jointly by USGS, UC Berkeley and Caltech relies on detecting P waves from seismic ruptures. When land rises without generating detectable tremors, these networks remain silent until the damage is already done. 
emergency managers realized they had no protocols for evacuating populations from areas experiencing ongoing vertical displacement. Infrastructure vulnerability assessments revealed the scope of the challenge. California's coastal development assumes stable elevation references that have guided construction codes for generations. Ports, refineries, power plants, and wastewater treatment facilities were built with specific relationships to sea level and groundwater tables. When those relationships change overnight, critical systems fail in cascading sequences that emergency planners had never modeled. The truth is, most coastal communities lack the monitoring density needed to detect precursor signals of rapid uplift. While major urban areas benefit from dense GPS networks and INSAR satellite coverage, rural stretches of coastline rely on sparse monitoring that could miss localized uplift events until they become regional disasters. What this means is that communities need fundamentally different approaches to coastal hazard planning. Traditional evacuation routes designed for tsunamis assume the roads themselves remain passable. Rapid uplift can buckle highways, collapse bridges, and create elevation discontinuities that trap residents rather than providing escape paths. Coastal evacuation planning must now consider scenarios where the threat isn't incoming water, but the ground itself becoming unstable. Emergency supplies traditionally focused on earthquake survival kits need expansion to include equipment for extended isolation when transportation networks fail due to elevation changes rather than structural collapse. The monitoring network expansion required to provide adequate early warning would cost billions and require coordination between federal agencies, state governments, and private sector operators. Real-time alert capabilities would need integration with existing emergency communication systems, but the challenge lies in interpreting subtle precursor signals that may not follow patterns established by seismic hazards. Community preparedness education faces the difficult task of explaining risks that most residents have never considered. Earthquake drills and tsunami evacuation procedures are familiar concepts. Teaching people to recognize signs of ground instability and respond to elevation change emergencies requires new frameworks that don't yet exist in public safety curricula. Insurance implications extend far beyond the immediate crisis. Policies that cover earthquake damage or flood losses weren't written with rapid uplift scenarios in mind. The legal and financial frameworks for recovery from non-seismic ground movement remain largely untested, leaving property owners and businesses in regulatory limbo. Long-term implications for sea level rise projections and coastal management planning are staggering. Climate adaptation strategies assume predictable rates of ocean rise against stable land elevations. If coastal uplift can occur rapidly and unpredictably, Existing models for managed retreat, infrastructure hardening, and ecosystem preservation become obsolete. The ongoing vertical movement detected by monitoring networks means this crisis isn't over. Whatever geological process initiated the uplift continues to operate beneath California's coast. Communities must prepare for the possibility that the land will keep rising, that new areas may be affected, or that the process could reverse, creating sudden subsidence that would flood newly elevated areas. The geological processes driving rapid coastal uplift remain poorly understood, challenging everything we thought we knew about living on California's dynamic coastline. Current monitoring networks detected the impossible but cannot explain the cause. Whatever force lifted hundreds of miles of coast continues operating beneath our feet. Subscribe for updates on this developing geological mystery and the scientific race to understand Earth's hidden mechanics before the next impossible event strikes.